The impact of this double family tragedy was exacerbated by the financial ruin brought on by economic pressures caused by the Asia Minor disaster. Next to succumb was Ritzos himself, um, who fell ill in 1926 and, was, um, and went to Soteria Sanatorium as a charity case. Uh, then in 1932, his father, Eleutherios, um, was committed to the infamous uh, mental asylum that mean. Ritzos attempts to deal with these tragic events directly in some of his early poetry, as for example, uh, in this uh, poem, To My Father, in which he um, explicitly refers to his own uh, stay at Soteria Sanatorium and his father's uh, confinement in Daphne. Uh, this is from his collection, Tractor, uh, from 1934. Um, there's also the example of uh, the song of my sister, uh, who was also uh, unfortunately confined to uh, Daphne. Following the publication of his second collection, Pyramids, uh, the following year, left-wing critics accused Ritzos of being self-centered and he lacks language too poetic and not suitable for the people. Ritzos, however, was responsive to contemporary events as he demonstrated with his poetry collection Epitaphios of 1936. It was written in honor of the grieving mother of Tassos uh, Tusis killed during a demonstration in Thessaloniki. This photograph here uh, shows Tusis' mother lamenting over his corpse. It appeared in the left-wing newspaper Rizospastis and inspired Ritzos to write this collection, whose main theme is, of course, one of mourning. The word epitaphios is closely linked with Byzantine liturgy and iconography, in which the Virgin Mary plays a starring role as the Greek mother. In our surviving dramatic corpus, Electra is <coughs> Greek tragedy's mourner par excellence, a testament to the power of female lament, to the power of the female <coughs> voice. Electra's close association with mourning in antiquity uh, made this scene of the meeting between and her brother Orestes, um, the most popular um, of uh, the most popular scene of her in, uh, in art in, from the vases that survive. When World War II broke out and Greece was occupied, Ritus's support of the Communist Party put his life in danger. Ritus's first electro poem, The Dead House, was in fact written in memory of his comrade, Electra Apostolou, executed by the Germans in 1944. As you know, the end of the war brought no respite as the tension between right and left led to the outbreak of the Civil War. The right won, and left-wing intellectuals were imprisoned alongside all those Greeks suspected of having communist sympathies. Ritus was sent to the island of Lemnos and um, Macronosos. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the one I wanted. Um, and yes, I skipped over this bit. Um, Miki Stodorakis, of course, set Ritus' epitaphios to music. It's one of the examples of how his poetry was uh, performed. Um, to return to Ritus on, um, on the prison islands, uh, he was rearrested um, and sent to Iceland uh, after a compassionate release. And here it's important to mention that theatre was an important aspect of life on the islands. The prisoners engaged in amateur theatricals, which included the reading and the performance of Greek tragedy. And here, of course, I refer you to the um, work of Honor Van Steen, Theatre of the Condemned. Um, a wonderful book in which she explores um, what went on from the little evidence, of course, that survives. Uh, now, through 
Throughout his years as an internal exile, poetry provided an effective coping mechanism for Ritsos. So here we have poetry as consolation and as therapy for trauma. And it's during this period of his life that Ritsos' engagement with the classical past started to intensify and it became a major theme in his poetry. Perhaps both as a means of avoiding censorship, but also of achieving the necessary critical distance that I've mentioned before. The first three of what I have labeled the Electra poems, The Dead House, Under the Shadow of the Mountain, and Orestes, were completed and published during the, this period. And they were followed by Philoctetes, Ajax, and Chrysothemis. During the dictatorship, Ritsus was once again arrested and imprisoned, uh, but due to his ill health, he was confined to house arrest. Ritsus's engagement with the classical past culminated with the reissued edition of the Fourth Dimension, in which he collected poems featuring tragic heroines originally published separately. Uh, this included Helen, the Return of Iphigenia, Ismini, the fourth Electra poem, Chrysothemis, and Phaedra. Uh, so, Ritsus, um, in, in the reissued edition of uh, the fourth dimension, uh, reordered the poems um, and created a new uh, design for the collection. Let us now turn to the question of why the tragic Electra specifically by examining Ritus' Electra poems more closely. Just a quick note on the translation I'm using. Um, this is, um, all, all the English quotations come from Green and Barclay's um, translation of the collection. In the Dead House, the narrator is an old, lonely woman, a victim of the wars, the Trojan War, the Second World War, and the Greek Civil War are completed in this poem to make her into a survivor of both ancient and modern wars. In the prologue, the messenger says that one of the daughters of the house, Velathike, sees the mythology, the history, and the ancient life of the parents and the parents, not the children, but the children. I think this is a rather good description in the poet's own words of his poetic strategy that deliberately blurs the boundaries between past and present. And as Professor Tsiobas argues, the emphasis rather falls more on the present. The modern Greek narrator of the poem presents herself as an Electra figure. She narrates the story of her life to a messenger sent by her uncle, recounting that the other house gradually fell into disrepair, like Critus' own family home in Monemassia and how she and her sister live in just two rooms while the rest of the house has been taken over by the clutter of the past. In ancient tragedy, Electra's obsession with the murder of her father places her outside the office, a perpetual exile in a liminal space. She's stuck in the past and unable to move on. Ritus himself, um, of course a frequent exile and outsider, shares this trait with the ancient tragic versions of Electra. And perhaps that's part of the reason why he found her an attractive um, ancient figure. The Electra persona describes how the messenger arrived from Troy to tell her mother the news of the victory and how the Clytemnestra figure locked herself in the throng, the bathhouse, and did her makeup. Κόκκινη, κόκκινη, ολοπόρφυρη, σαν μάσκα, σαν νεκρή, σαν άγραμα, σαν φόνησα, είσαι σκοτωμένη κιόλας. Of course, according to some versions of the myth, Aegisthus and Clytemnestra murdered Achaemenon in his bar. Ritus' reception of his ancient source models is thus, I would argue, a highly sophisticated one um, that assumes a normal knowledgeable audience familiar with the intricacies of Electra's story and the many versions in which it has come down to us. 
The modern Electra and her sister, in Richardson's poems, are cut off from the rest of the world by Enna Cortino Cotan, that named um, the house and the thoughts are often in the past. Like their ancient predecessors, the sisters are cut off from ordinary society. Uh, the servants, their servants flee, and the sisters abandon everything. Because they give up on trying to wash away the blood out of the stone of the house. In the epilogue, the messenger leaves unearthed by the old woman's words. He describes how piece of the blackimo any thatoskotinon ogo ekino to speak you, samena epivitiko ahieo tafo, kano hitiko tamio, ika mati tu laiston ti preti na profibo, kena profibo. Mrs. warning seems to be that the past can trap us like a prison, as it does the electric figure in this poem. In Under the Shadow of the Mountain, um, Under the Shadow of the Mountain features another Electra persona as narrator, only this time um, she addresses her old, um, old nurse. The title refers not only to the ruins of Mycenae, but also to Rizzus' family house in the shadow of the mountain of Monemasia. Rizzus' Electra is entombed in the house in perpetual mourning, remembering events from her youth. Tomonimo forma tu pentus, agato popano, ataveca mo cronia, sanatan to pezimo, enos filakismeno, pudenida para filakismeno. Riches, interested in existential questions, portrays the narrator of this poem as highly aware of her own mortality. O thanatos plei mesa mas, i plei o memis ato lipno mas kiolas sta mistika nera. The mother figure this Electra describes is not the Clytemnestra we know from Greek tragedy. She is much more humane. And Rittus' Electra even talks about how her feelings of hatred have lessened as she grew older. My brother's vengeance was no longer needed. Of course, um, this is where Rittus deviates the furthest from uh, the ancient uh, models who are all um, obsessed with vengeance. You can never imagine any of them uh, saying something like that. In Sophocles, Electra is even willing to sacrifice her own life in order to have her revenge. In Euripides' eponymous play, she even goes as far as to place her hand on Orestes' sword when he murders their mother. In the epilogue, under the shadow of the mountain, Electra is abandoned, even by her nurse, to whom she has addressed her soliloquy, and her corpse is discovered a week later by a traveler. Her smelly remains are hastily, hastily buried with little ceremony. Torrential rain washes everything away. Reluctant to fulfill his destiny, 
This echoes and expands on the moment of doubt that Orestes experiences in Aeschylus' cure for it, when he's confronted with the reality um, of what matricide entails. Um, the same is true um, in uh, Euripides' Electra, where um, Orestes' sister is always pushing him towards vengeance. But unlike um, his ancient predecessors, Richard's Orestes realizes the futility of his sister's desire for revenge. Si diriti norgitis me tin endasi tis idias tis fornistis, an fa di mechme ki aftin, ti fa di sen. Tarokos fovate ti me plirosi tis timorias, mi ke ver dismini ti pota. Um, this is again um, goes back to this issue of um, the power of the, of the female voice um, and also um, what I've often thought about Sophocles' Electra, um, that once the, um, the vengeance is accomplished, what did she do? Uh, and I find it very interesting that marriage to Pilates is not mentioned um, in Sophocles. In Ritos, Electra is unable to let go. Uh, of the past and has become an angry and lonely woman who is nourished by her desire for revenge. Orestes, however, is able to feel compassion for his sister despite the pressure she puts him under. So pas epiae dystichismeni, mesa sti siopiti san akuo to dikio tis, tosa prostatevti mes ti nogitis, tosa dikimeni, meta pikra malia tis pesmenos tus omus tis, san elafia ho. I would say that there's no hope for Electra in Orestes' Orestes. She is incapable of moving forward. But Orestes' self-awareness perhaps gives the audience some cause for optimism. In Ritus' Chrysothemis, Electra's rage and inflexibility lead to madness. The poem is imagined as an interview Chrysothemis gives to a female reporter in which she reflects on the history of her family in a long monologue. Her humble and accepting nature contrasts sharply with Electra's inability to forgive and to let go of the past. As in Sophocles' tragedy, Chrysothemis provides the foil for her more extreme sister. In Ritus' poem, uh, Chrysothemis recounts how a younger Electra Φόρεσε ένα κράνος του πατέρα, πλάγες έτσι με το κράνος. So Richard's as Electra chooses to wear a symbol of the burden that the murder of her father has placed on his children's shoulders and that perennial need for revenge. Uh, also, of course, um, uh, it reminds me of the uh, of Jung's Electra uh, syndrome. Their brother in this poem, as in the earlier Orestes, is reluctant to fulfill his role as the avenger. Chrysothemis advocates that ultimately freedom is the most precious gift of all, but her sister doesn't want to be free. To demonstrate her decision, she deliberately blackens herself from head to toe with soot from the chimney and wears a red handbag across her forehead forehead as outward signs of her never-ending lament. She's the perpetual mourner, unable to detach herself from the past, caught in an endless cycle from which there is no escape. It is Chrysothemis' acceptance of loss and tragedy and her mother's nature that endears her to the servants and wins her the sympathy of the reporter. In Sophocles' tragedy, Electra labels his sister a coward for refusing to take part in Electra's plans to kill the murderers of their father. In Rinsos, Chrysothemis ends the interview with the plea to be forgiven for choosing not to act. The reporter's published interview ensures that Chrysothemis is remembered and celebrated for her choice. In this, chronologically the last of the Electra poems, Richard seems to endorse Chrysothemis' rather than Electra's choice. Um, and I've often wondered, actually, um, how far would an ancient 5th uh, century BC um, Athenian audience 
students have sympathized with um, the extreme nature of Electra and how Chrysothemis might have appeared quite attractive uh, to them uh, in being much more like what a woman um, was supposed uh, to be uh, in antiquity. Uh, so, um, a key moment in the poem, I think, demonstrates the desire to put down the burden of both the classical past and the legacy of bitterness left by the civil war and the subsequent troubles. In Chrysothemis, an unnamed man tries to weigh a bird, but the bird escapes and he cries out, Venechi varos, venecho varos, venecho me varos, panamaste, hafikame. Chris's double vision of the classical past offers us, I think, a unique perspective from which to reassess the tragic heroine Electra and her impact in particular in modern Greece. Ultimately, Chris's Electra personas do not offer the reader much hope for the future. Survivors of the wars and disasters that plagued Greece throughout its long history, they're surrounded by death, loss, and the ghosts of the past. Electra is a modern Greek survivor who ultimately must be exercised. Her desire for revenge and her obsession with the past must be cleansed. Ritus refused to adopt a reverential attitude towards the classical past. Um, his is a much more um, agonistic, I think, uh, relationship with ancient Greece. While he acknowledges its importance, he also reminds his audience of the need to question this assessment of the importance of the classical past much more closely, and perhaps even to ultimately reject it. And that is why Electra must die. Thank you very much.